start this video with a definition. An extension k over f is finitely generated if there are elements alpha 1 up through alpha k in this field k, such that k is the field generated by this finite set of elements alpha 1 up through alpha k over f. OK, so with that definition in mind, the goal of this video is to prove a theorem that tells us about uh, fields that are generated not by a single element, but by finite sets of elements. So what we want to prove in this video is theorem 17, which says that the extension k over f is finite if and only if k is generated by a finite number of algebraic elements over f. We can say something more precise about uh, degrees. If k is generated over f by algebraic elements alpha 1 up through alpha k of degrees n1 up through nk, then the degree of the extension k over f is at most the product of these degrees. So knowing something about the degrees of the individual elements alpha 1 over k, sorry, alpha 1 over f, the degree of alpha 1 over f, the degree of alpha 2 over f. Knowing something about these individual degrees over f tells you something about the degree of the whole extension that comes from taking the field generated over f by this set of elements. And we're going to start by just proving the forward direction that if k over f is finite, that extension is finite, then k is generated by a finite number of algebraic elements over f. So we'll prove that direction. Then we'll come back and prove the converse and the second statement together. So let's suppose that this extension is degree n. And let's, OK, if we know this extension is degree n, we can find a basis of n elements of k as a vector space over f. So let's name those elements alpha 1 up through alpha n. This is a basis for k as a vector space over f. And each one of the fields generated by alpha i over f is a subfield of k, and it contains f. So what do we know? By this multiplicativity of de field extension degrees that we proved, we know that the degree of f adjoint alpha i over f divides the degree of k over f, which is n. So in particular, each one of these degrees is finite. And proposition 12 that we proved in an earlier lecture says that alpha i is algebraic over f if and only if the extension f adjoin alpha i over f is a finite extension. OK, so that says that each one of these alpha i's is algebraic over f. So what do we know? We know that k uh, has a basis alpha 1 up through alpha n as a vector space over f. And that each one of these alpha i's is algebraic over f. So the only thing we need to note is that uh, k is generated by this set, alpha 1 up through alpha n, uh, over f. That if you take the uh, field generated by alpha 1 up through alpha n over f, that is k. So where did these elements come from? They're a basis for k as a vector space over f. So what does that mean? That means that every element of k is a linear combination of these elements with coefficients in f. So k is certainly a field that contains f and also contains each one of these elements. So uh, OK, so the field generated by alpha 1 up through alpha n over f is certainly contained in k. How do you know that uh, the field generated by alpha 1 up through alpha n over f isn't some proper subfield of k? Well, uh, any field that contains alpha 1 up through alpha n and also contains f needs to contain all of the linear combinations of these elements with coefficients in f. OK, but that is k. So we can see the inclusion both ways, and that completes the proof of this forward direction of the first statement. So what is left to do to prove theorem 17? 
What we need to show is that if alpha one up through alpha k are algebraic over f of degrees n one up through nk, then if you take the field generated by alpha one up through alpha k over f, this is an algebraic extension of f of degree at most the product of these degrees. And the big idea is going to be to try to understand this field generated over f by alpha one up through alpha k as a sequence of simple extensions where you're taking the field generated over your previous field by one new element each time. Because we know quite a lot more about simple extensions than we do about uh, these extensions generated by finite sets of size larger than one. All right, so I'll pause and erase, and I'll explain this big idea in more detail. The big idea here is that we want to understand the field generated by alpha 1 up through alpha k over f via a sequence of simple extensions, where we're joining one new element each time. So let's start by seeing how this happens when k equals 2. So the lemma that we're going to prove is that the field generated over f by alpha and beta is the same as the field generated over f adjoin alpha by beta. So I just want to note that the case we're going to focus on is where alpha 1 up through alpha k are algebraic over f of degrees n1 up through nk. But this lemma, this is true even if alpha and beta are not algebraic over f. We're not using that anywhere here. So the idea is we're going to show that these two fields are the same by showing the inclusion each way. So let's just take uh, this way that the field generated by beta over f adjoin alpha is contained in the field generated by alpha and beta over f. Well, OK, so the field generated by alpha and beta over f contains f, and it contains alpha. So it certainly contains the field generated by alpha over f, because that's the smallest extension of f that contains alpha and f. But it also contains beta. And what is this? This is the smallest extension of the field generated uh, over, by alpha over f that contains beta. So it's contained in this extension, which contains both, I, sorry, in this field that contains both f adjoin alpha and also beta. All right, so now let's show inclusion the other way. Uh, we want to show that f adjoin alpha and beta is contained in f adjoin alpha adjoin beta. OK, so what do we know about f adjoin alpha adjoin beta? It contains f, it contains alpha, and it contains beta. And what is the field generated by alpha and beta over f? It is the smallest extension of f that contains f, alpha, and beta. So this is one extension of f that contains, I mean, this is some field that contains f, alpha, and beta. And this is the smallest field that contains f, alpha, and beta. So we're done. So this one is contained in this one. Oh, sorry. Uh, I said it the opposite way. Uh, where this is the smallest one. So this one is contained in this one. OK, fixed it. Uh, this is the kind of thing that it's like harder to say than it is to just check. OK, so this is the kind of statement we want when k equals 2. We're thinking of the field generated by alpha and beta over f as uh, you have the field generated by alpha over f, which is a simple extension of f. And then you're taking a simple extension of that. So it's a sequence of simple extensions. All right, so with this lemma in mind, uh, if you have k to be the field generated by alpha 1 up through alpha k over f, this is the same as taking the field generated by alpha 1 up through alpha k minus 1 over f and adjoining alpha k. So what are we seeing? If we iterate this process, where we sort of peel off the last alpha in this list each time, we can see that k 
is built from uh, F adjoining one element at a time. So let's create this sequence of fields where F we're going to label with F0. And then F1 is going to be F0 adjoin alpha 1. It'll be the field generated uh, by alpha 1 over F0. That's contained in F2, which we're going to define to be the field generated by alpha 2 over F1. So OK, it certainly contains F1, but it also contains this alpha 2. And it's the smallest extension of F1 that contains F1 and alpha 2. And so on. So we could define F3, F4, up to Fk, which will be Fk minus 1 adjoin alpha k. And that is going to be k. So just to do this more precisely, Fi plus 1 is the field generated uh, by alpha i plus 1 over Fi. So you can see it's consistent with how I have this here. OK, so none of that supposed that these elements alpha and beta were algebraic over f or that in this case any alpha 1 up through alpha k that any of these were algebraic over f. So the next thing we'll do is we'll specialize to the case where alpha 1 up through alpha k are algebraic over f of degrees n1 up through nk. And we'll use the multiplicativity of the extension of, of the degrees of field extensions uh, to complete the proof of theorem 17. Where are we? We're considering this field k, which is the field generated by alpha 1 up through alpha k over f. And we've seen how to think of k in terms of a sequence of simple extensions, going back to f and then uh, f adjoin alpha 1, and then this f1 adjoin alpha 2, and so on. So now, this setup works for general elements alpha 1 up through alpha k. Now we're going to suppose that alpha 1 up through alpha k are algebraic over f of degrees n1 up through nk. And the question we want to think about, we know that the degrees of these field extensions are multiplicative. So if we know that alpha i plus 1 has degree n i plus 1 over f, what does that mean? That means the degree of the minimal polynomial of this element over f is n i plus 1. That we know there's some unique, monic, irreducible polynomial with coefficients in f bracket x of which alpha i plus 1 is a root. And that polynomial has degree n i plus 1. Well, what we really want to know isn't the degree of this element over f, but we want to know the degree of the field extension f i plus 1 over f i, because that's the thing that's going to show up in this multiplicativity formula. So what we need to know is what is the degree of alpha i plus 1 over f i, not over f? Well, what does that mean? Like, what is that? Uh, this is um, the degree of the minimal polynomial of this element, alpha i plus 1 over f i. So what does that mean? There's a unique monic irreducible polynomial with coefficients in f i bracket x that has alpha i plus 1 as a root. So what is this degree? I don't know. But I do know that it's at most n i plus 1. So why is that? Because something we proved in our discussion of minimal polynomials is that if l is an extension of f and alpha is an element that's algebraic over f, then we know it's algebraic over L. It satisfies a polynomial with coefficients in F. Certainly, it satisfies a polynomial with coefficients in L. So what can we say about the minimal polynomial? Well, the minimal polynomial of this element alpha over F is some polynomial with coefficients in L bracket X that has alpha as a root. So that means whatever the minimal polynomial of alpha is over L, that has to divide the minimal polynomial of alpha over f. So in particular, if this thing has degree n i plus 1, this thing has degree at most n i plus 1. OK. So what do we know? We know that degrees of field extensions are multiplicative. So the degree of k over f is the product 
of the degree of FK over FK minus one times the degree of FK minus one over FK minus two times 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 the degree of F one over F zero. But what we've just seen, what is the degree of one of these simple field extensions? It's the degree of the corresponding minimal polynomial of that element that we're adjoining to the previous field. So, uh, oh, the, these are written backwards now, but the degree of FK over FK minus one is at most NK. And the degree of FK minus one over FK minus two is at most NK minus one. And the degree of F1 over F0, that is the degree of F adjoin alpha one over F, that is the degree of the minimal polynomial of alpha one over F. This one really is N1. The other ones, we don't know, but we do know that this one has degree at most N1. The next one has, sorry, this one has degree actually N1. The next one has degree at most N2, then at most N3. So this product is at most the product N1 times N2 up through NK. So what have we seen? We've seen that the extension K over F is finite and has degree at most this product. There was one more piece of theorem 17. We wanted to say that uh, this extension was also algebraic, but that follows immediately from corollary 13, which was the main thing we proved in the last lecture, that finite extensions are algebraic. So putting all of this together completes the proof of theorem 17.